Hello everyone and welcome today's web to today's webinar, the intro to hold it open and close the deal with MAPS coach Chris Suarez. We appreciate you for joining us. Please note that this webinar is being recorded and you will receive the recording link today. If you have any questions for Chris, please type those into the questions box located in your taskbar. Following the webinar, if you have any questions, please email us at fasttrack at kw.com. That's fasttrack at kw.com. Thank you very much and enjoy your webinar. Awesome. Thanks so much for the uh, intro, Ben, and uh, welcome to Hold It Open and Close the Deal, an introduction uh, to our MAPS Fast Track program uh, by that same name, which uh, begins actually in just about uh, one week, uh, next Tuesday, the 27th. Uh, today, what we wanted to do was um, provide some real value around our open house model, and uh, uh, while doing that, uh, give you some, uh, some real takeaways that you can implement in your business actually even starting today. We are we are uh, doing this call live uh, the day after a family reunion. So many of you actually uh, I may have met um, just over the last three four days for the first time. Many of you I may know from uh, from the last uh, I guess decade uh, that I've been with the company um, and also the last uh, few years really really focused on delivering this open house model to as many people as possible within our organization. And here's why. Um, I've shared a couple times uh, recently, both at Mega Camp and Mega Mega Live with Gary Keller, a bit about our strategy as we grew our business and really taking a lead generation activity and turning lead generation activity into a lead generation model. We like to call that a lead generation lever. Well, today we're going to go very, very quickly through one of those levers, which is our open house lever. Now, we'll go through the slides quickly. Um, what I will, t what I will share with you is uh, we're really taking an eight-week program and, and giving you really a, a 30, 40-minute um, overview of that program. And I promise you, if uh, if we pay attention closely, we'll get enough enough content out of this uh, webinar such that we might uh, even change what we're doing uh, this weekend at our open house. Uh, our secret in our success, both here locally um, on our home team and now across the country, is that all of it starts, or actually all of it started, on one main fuel source. It is, it is, it is the main gasoline of our, our business, and that's been open houses. And why do I call it that? Well, uh, I've shared many times over the last few days at uh, Family Reunion, um, page 132 of the Millionaire Real Estate Agent uh, book, uh, 100, page 132 of MREA, Gary said that the octane of our fuel is irrelevant unless we have enough to get to our destination. Right, the octane of our fuel is irrelevant unless we have enough to get to our destination. And so early on, I made a very, very concerted effort to make sure that my fuel, if I chose open houses, uh, my fuel was consistently adding to the database, that I stopped focusing on the quality perhaps of the lead or the contact, which oftentimes we improperly judged, and I just focused on the number of people added to my database through our open houses. And so what I will tell you is that is a strategy that you will begin to see while we go through this together, and that is a strategy where for over eight weeks, we implement systems, tools, and models to really build that database. Uh, more than anything, just building that database as we go. What you see on your screen right now is a uh, is a map, and what I the reason why I share this is because uh, those are the states that we have uh, recently or or not so recently, I suppose, and some of them expanded to. And uh, as as I as I actually travel and and fly and, and and teach expansion, what I often say is one of the most important things to do when expanding is making sure that we have an expandable duplicatable, leverageable, uh, replicable business model around our leads. And I'm here to share with you that uh, the next few slides will show how to take anything you do, whether it be open houses or expires or FISBOs or door knocking or circle prospecting, and really turn that into something that is expandable. Uh, our goal is to continue to turn that country green, um, as you see uh, on your map in front of you. Um, and we've done that through what we call the six P's. Now, we call this our six P's of the open house. However, they could be called the six P's of any lead generation. We believe and what we've found is if we focus on these six P's, uh, the six P's uh, of any lead generation activity, it will, it will force us, push us, or drag us into creating some phenomenal systems and models around that activity such that 
it can happen the same way day in, day out, weekend in, weekend out, month over month, year over year. So our first six Ps, our first, our first point to really take some notes around are the fact that we need each of these six Ps in any lead generation activity that we do. The first one, psyche, right? Which is which is just another another way to say mindset. I delivered this uh, an hour an hour presentation on open houses to about fifteen hundred people just yesterday uh, in Anaheim, and and we went through these six Ps in, in in great detail. But the first one's psyche or mindset. The second P is preparation. What needs to happen to prepare properly to execute? The third P is promotion. What are we going to do to promote, in this case, this open house? The fourth P, process. What process are we going to follow? What process can we be convinced that if we do it day in and day out, time in and time out, we will see the same result? The fifth P, performance. Now I'm I'm here to say that most of us that's where we, we that's where we excel right we got into this business because we liked to perform where you might be a phenomenal salesperson well we're going to go through the performance of a of a properly executed open house and then sixth p post for this case the post open now as you look at those six p's there are only two that have to be done by you in fact, that's arguable as well. But but the first P, psyche or mindset, you need to focus on. And the fifth P, performance, at this point, nah, that has to be done by you. But every other P could easily be leveraged out, could easily be duplicated uh, by you or by someone else. And eventually that performance piece can be leveraged as well. Why do I say that? And why do I know that? Or why is that my mindset or my psyche? Well, I go back to probably my second year um, with Keller Williams and, uh, and and building a team, and I wound up at uh, at Mega Camp on stage with Gary and, and going through my open house model. and And this is what he said to me there on stage. He said, uh, "Could I have permission to um, share my insight or or coach you for a second uh, in front of at that point about five thousand people?" And and I said, "Sure, Gary, just like I should." And um, this is what he said. He said, "You know, you will only go so far with this model." Right? This is before, before what we're about to roll out today for you and before the eight-week open house course. But he said, you'll only go so far executing your open house model at this point because you could only do so many open houses. Whether your commitment's one open house a day, two open houses a day, at that moment in time, I was doing about seven open houses a week. He said, no matter what you do, there's only so many days or so many hours in a day such that you can get to two, maybe three open houses. And, and, and who's going to do that? He said, you have to make sure that you're building at a model that doesn't hamstring your business in the future, no matter how big you wish to be. So you will see as we go through our eight week program together, that this open house model is designed such that if you wanted to leverage, if you wanted to grow, if you wanted to expand, it could be part of your business plan. So let's get through the first P. The first P is mindset. And here's what I want you to do. I want us to think about the open house not as an activity, but rather as a strategy to add to the database. At the end of the day, open houses are lead generation. Uh, Gary Taylor used to say, you know, it's time on task over time, which is a nice way to say consistency. You just have to be consistent. Now, you could end there and, and, and probably improve your business if you were just consistent with your open houses. However, Gary, about a year and a half ago, added something to that expression, time on task over time. He said it's time on the right task over time. What was happening is, is people were showing up committed. People were showing up consistent, but people weren't showing up with the same results day in, day out, day in, day out. That is one of the, one of the reasons why Gary Keller said, well, expansion is, is, the, is, the, is an inevitable future of real estate. And this is because we know that there are right ways to do things and wrong ways to do things. So if we're going to focus on something, if we're going to focus on a task over time, we want to make sure it's the right task over time. And that's why fast track programs were born. It really was a way for maps to go out, interview agents all over the country and say, well, man, you're, you're phenomenal. You're the best at expired. You're the best at for sale by owners. You're the best at inside sales agents. You're the best at, at training an assistant. You're the best at open houses such that if everybody followed this process, 
we know we can expect specific results from specific activities. It's time on the right task over time. Now, my mindset and our mindset moving forward together will be this, that real estate is a database business, that every single person that walks through your open house is one of these four types of people. They are either an immediate seller, an immediate buyer, right? And those are our favorites because they want to do something now in the next 30, 60, or 90 days, or they're a future seller and, and future buyer, right? They don't want to do something in the next 90 days. But the reason why they're either one of those four is if they want to buy or sell, great, right? Congratulations, you got lucky. But if they don't want to buy or sell, my mindset is this, that they will be added to the database because this is a database business. And one day, everybody should own a home. So one day, everybody, if they don't own a home already, they will be a buyer. The second thing is, if they own a home already, they will one day sell that home. I don't care if they're going to live there forever. At one point, forever will end, and my team or our organization will be there because they're in our database and we're connecting with them in a consistent way. Now, we have to execute on all six Ps in order for that to happen, but this is the first P, the psyche of the open house. The goal is to create haven't mats, people that I don't know and they don't know me, and turn them into Mets, and turn them into Mets. So that is going to be our psyche or our mindset. Now the second part of our mindset is that we need to have an economic model around our open houses. And I'm getting some questions in the question box. Um, I will try to uh, 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 answer this as we go, but yes, this will be recorded and, and that will be sent out. Um, so looking on the screen, this is the economic model of the open house. Uh, let's assume that you would like to make $250,000. Now, this is going to be very similar to the economic model in MREA, but unless we start with an economic model or a goal around our open house strategy, uh, then we won't have something to move towards or to hold ourselves accountable to. So I put put together just a simple economic model uh, for you on your screen. And this is what that looks like. Imagine for a moment that you would like to make a quarter of a million dollars from, from your open house strategy. Now again, this is something you could apply to each leg of your business or each, um, each leg of the stool for lead generation for your business. But if you wanted to make a quarter of a million dollars in open houses and your average sales price was 300,000, in order to make a quarter of a million dollars, you need to sell about $8.5 million worth of real estate, right, at 3%, which means you need to sell 28 homes. Now, I get it. It's different for all of us. I just took an average sales price of $300,000. Now, Gary in MREA says this, and this won't change. For every 12 people in your database that you've met, that you consistently and in a meaningful way stay in contact with and in relationship with and develop relationship with, you will, you will get two pieces of business. For every 12 people, you will sell two houses. So ultimately, in order to be on track to get to that quarter of a million dollars, in order for me to sell 28 homes, I need to have about 168 people in my database. Now, if I set an, a, 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 a not incredible goal of adding two people to my Met database from every open house, all of a sudden I am building out an economic model and I realize that I need to do 84 open houses, connecting with two people per open house, adding them to the database, connecting with them consistently and in a meaningful way in order for me to execute that 12 to 2 ratio and sell my 28 homes. So what does that look like on my schedule? 84 open houses a year, seven open houses every month, 1.75 open houses every week, right? About two open houses a week is the economic model of the open house. Now, the problem for most of us, myself included for years, was I just didn't have an economic model. And then I came across the, the section of MREA where Gary Keller said, everybody has an economic model, whether you realize it or not, you have an economic model. So we need to build out an economic model 
for each lead generation activity that we're going to do that feeds into the overall business plan of our business. But this is the economic model of an open house. Now, change the income goal, change the number of open houses you need to do. Change your team's goal, then you can add the number of open houses your team needs to do. But what I will say is I have followed this plan now for about a decade, this economic model, and consistently we're able to hit that income goal from the lead generation source uh, because we follow this model. So I I'm going to share one statistic as well. Uh, on your screen, these statistics are from NAR, and, and when I came across them a few years back, they blew my mind. Two out of three sellers, buyers and sellers, hire the first agent they meet. We know that. That's a statistic from NAR, right? Two out of three sellers will interview one agent two, before hiring them. Two out of three buyers will interview one agent before hiring them. Now, check out this second statistic. Eight out of ten open house guests are unrepresented. They're unrepresented. So you are there first, which means over 50% of all open house guests will hire the first person they meet and are unrepresented. When I saw that, it, it had me double down on my open house strategy. Well, now why don't we? Because our industry has done a poor job at convincing us right, that open houses are for new agents or open houses are grown out of or open houses has how we start our business as opposed to sustain our business. So don't lose uh, the, the focus on using open houses to generate Mets into your database because remember, eight out of 10 open house guests are unrepresented whether they say they are or not. So the next P is preparation. Now this is where we already fall down oftentimes as agents. Why? Because we just want to get to performance. Um, and I know that because all we need to do is check your email on Friday morning or Friday afternoon and every single one of us gets about three, four, or 21 emails from your office about new listings that are ready to be held open tomorrow or emails from agents that, that suddenly have their weekend free up and now they don't know what to do other than, well, maybe I should do an open house. So there's emails that fly back and forth, back and forth about open houses that we can do that Saturday or that Sunday. And I'm here to say this, um, let's change that. Let's change that. In fact, if we prepare properly, as you see, those emails will never happen. So let's talk about preparation. First of all, we need to build a business plan. We need to build a business plan. We'll spend about a week together in our eight week open house course talking about how do we target specific neighborhoods, making them prospecting based marketing enhanced. Uh, how do we pick neighborhoods based on traffic patterns? How do we pick neighborhoods based on businesses that fall within those neighborhoods and artillery streets that go through those neighborhoods and school districts within those neighborhoods with drop off times and pickup times, which goes to traffic patterns and, and varying times of day, lunchtime open houses, commuting time open houses, school drop off and pick up open houses, walking pattern open houses, weekend mornings and evening open houses. So if you're going to run a very big business, we have to go outside our typical Saturday from one to three or Sunday from 11 to one. And quite honestly, if those are the only times you do open houses, well then you don't have a very exciting life because every weekend when everyone else is having fun and when, you're, when, when your family wants to be with you, that's when your lead generation is done. So be careful that we don't target specific neighborhoods improperly or target traffic patterns and days and times improperly. We'll go through that in, in a, for a full week of, of building a business plan around open houses. And then, and then third and almost most important is going back to our gap analysis that we talked about in our database, knowing how many deals we want to close and then figure out how many open houses will be open. The number of visitors we expect, the number of contacts we expect as well, is all part of that preparation phase uh, of our open houses. Now, as we prepare, we'll go through, we'll take you through a, a, a process um, as well uh, of building a digital folder, right? So that when you walk into that open house, you have a digital folder filled with value. Our mindset is that we are there to trade value for contact information. So we'll have a digital flyer. We'll have a PDF of actives, pendings, and sold. We'll have some digital economic reports, and, and I'll go through on the course which ones I use. We'll have uh, potentially some items of value. Maybe it's uh, the schedule of the local sports team. Maybe it's uh, uh, activities that are happening this summer. Maybe it's activities that are happening this winter in the area, uh, depending on where we live and what season it is. And then we're going to have a Google Doc lead sheet. 
And we instituted this such that as we engage and trade value for contact information, I have one source to type in their name, their phone number, their email address, whether they're a future buyer, future seller, immediate buyer, immediate seller, notes, and which follow-up plan I'm going to put them on. It's a very simple Google Doc lead sheet. But what happens is as those as my guests enter the door and I develop a conversation with them and get their contact information, that goes into the Google Doc lead sheet and then our assistant imports that into the, uh, the CRM or the, uh, the database that we use. Now, why do we do that? Because I know what happens. You do the open house, you write down their name, it ends up on a sticky piece of paper or the back of a flyer or, or maybe in best case scenario, uh, a, um, an open house registry, and it never makes it to the database. So we prepare properly by having that Google Doc lead sheet. And we'll talk about how to set that up during our eight week process. Well, the next two Ps are promotion and process. Promotion and process. What I will go through now is our seven day process of promotion for the open house. Now, if it's a seven day process, that's why that's why Fridays don't work. Fridays don't work. <coughs> excuse me. Fridays don't work to to agree on an open house or or choose an open house. Um, so uh, the question came up: Why Google Docs and not a program like Boomtown? Um, well, Oscar, uh, we we do put them into a program like a CRM, like Boomtown or Sync or eEdge or right. Uh, if for those of you that were a family reunion, uh, what will be uh, Keller Cloud, right? Our 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 new um, management software uh, that's being labbed and rolled out. So what I will say is that that is there strictly because it's easy and that's a live lead sheet. So that if I have three agents, five agents, ten agents doing open houses, they're all coming into one source. Um, and then those sources get put into the database in one systematic way. The less, the fewer people you have entering things into the database, there's a smaller margin of error. So um, great question. So promotion and process. What's the next step? Understanding that it's a seven day process. I'm going to go through this quickly. And again, remember, we're going to go through that process for an hour together to make sure that the systems are clear. But on Monday, we're going to select an open house, right? Or we might call that day one, because if I'm doing an open house on a Wednesday, well, guess what? The Wednesday before is when that open house gets selected. So every day of the week, you may have selections of open houses going on for a week from today. On Tuesday or day two, we're going to post that open online. We're going to obtain a call list, right, through whether that's software or title. Um, we're going to obtain a call list of the closest 100 neighbors, and we're going to mail invites. Now, you can never get a mailed invite out if you decide to do the open house on Wednesday for Friday or Friday for Sunday. So by choosing it early, it allows us to execute a multi-prong approach. You're going to see calls being made. You're going to see digital outreach. You're going to see mail happen. It's a very systematic approach. It's a very low cost approach as well. Uh, we go through the budget of the open house together in our eight week program. Uh, but on, on average, this will cost us about $60, $65 per open house. Wednesday, we're going to post it online. We're going to begin those calls to neighbors and the sign goes up or day three, the sign goes up in the yard and all that sign's going to say is open Thursday from 11 to one or open Thursday, Saturday from, from uh, 10 to 12, whatever the day and time it is. Day four or Thursday, we're going to post it online again. We're going to continue our calls to neighbors. We're going to invite those in our database that are tagged in that neighborhood. Maybe they've visited open houses in that neighborhood before. Maybe they're, they live in the neighborhood uh, or we sold them a house in the neighborhood before. But we're going to invite database tags for the quadrant of the city that we're doing the open house in or the neighborhood that we're doing the open house in. We're going to pull up all sign calls and all old internet leads that came in off of that listing, which means what? We need a system to track it, which we'll talk through in our course. On day five, we're going to post it online again. We're going to prepare that digital folder and get all, all of our comps in that digital folder. And on day six, we're going to post it online. We're going to get those directional signs installed. We're going to door knock. We're going to invite our sphere by phone, and we're going to make a social media post as well. Now, if we're door knocking, you will see in front of you, and, and, and you will get a recording of this. So um, if you're on the call, the email will go out, so don't worry uh, too much. You'll get this, but you'll see our pre-open house script. This is our door knocking script. 
Uh, we systematize it. Uh, we knock uh, 20 to 25 doors before every single open house with this very simple script. Which leads us to the next P, which is performance. Now, this is the one that we're so used to. Our performance usually starts a minute before the uh, open house uh, begins or maybe a minute after it begins um, if we roll in late. Uh, but what we want to do is make sure that our performance is the same every single time. So our goal in our performance is this, to strategically get their name, their number, their email, and their mailing address. Now, how do you do that? The name is simple. Right, because everyone should be willing to give you their name. And if they give you their first name, I always ask, great, and what was your last name? See, oftentimes we get their first name and we just don't ask that simple question. Great, what was your last name? If you ask that question, you will get it. No one has ever said to me in a decade, well, I'd rather not give you my last name. So if we ask, we will get it. The goal then, and we'll talk about strategy, is to really drive emails, right? To get their email address. Because by nature, the fact that we got their email address, it's very easy to get their phone number. As I'm typing in their email address or writing down their email address into my Google Doc spreadsheet, I will say, in case this email bounces back, what's a good number to reach you? They're already committed, so it's an easy way to get their phone number. And their mailing address, if they live in the neighborhood, and we're going to find that out in a minute how we ask them, if they live in the neighborhood, we can be certain uh, that as long as we know what street they live on or even if they live in the general area, we can pull their last name even if they don't give us their mailing address and get it uh, through county searches and title searches. So we're going to use technology to capture those leads, right? Ultimately trading value for their contact information. Uh, those digital folders, you could use Dropbox or Google Drive. We use ShareFile. Um, so, so we will use that technology in order to capture their name and number through conversation, through conversation. Um, and then we will obviously with the mindset, our goal always is providing value providing value. Uh, regarding phone numbers, we have some questions. We'll talk through some systems that you can use to get good phone numbers. And I will say that that will continue to get harder and harder. There are third party companies all over the place that battle for the best data. Um, uh, you know, there was a comment, Susan, that you've used white pages in Spokio. Uh, yes, many times those are wrong numbers. Um, here's what I will say. Um, even three contacts are better than no contacts. So we've used um, Mojo and Land Voice um, before for uh, third third party contacts as well. Um, okay, let's continue. And again, we we spend quite a bit more time uh, on the eight week program uh, during for to talk strategies for their phone numbers as well. Open house scripts. What I will say is, if you are taking notes or you're going to do a screenshot of anything today, uh, write this one down. Uh, this this script has helped us and dramatically changed the performance of our open houses from day one. Uh, no matter who they are as they enter, uh, once I introduce myself and I get their name, I say, "Great, are you out shopping for a home today, or do you happen to live in the neighborhood?" Here's why, because remember, my mindset or my psyche says this is one of four people, an immediate buyer, immediate seller, future buyer, future seller. They're one of those four. And by asking, are you out shopping for a home today or do you happen to live in the neighborhood? I know immediately if they're out shopping for a home, they're a future buyer. If, they're, if they live in the neighborhood, in, in my mind, right, they're an immediate or future seller. So using that script will immediately allow you to decide which direction to go in, right? Which direction to go in, um, in the rest of your conversation and allow you to know what's the best value, uh, trade, um, for who they are. If, if it's a buyer, I'm going to trade them, um, active properties or a list of other opens in the area. If it's a seller and they live in the neighborhood, I'm going to have some conversations about whether they're thinking about selling or whether they're trying to get an idea of value or whether or not it would be a value to them, right? A value to them to let them know, um, really to let them know what the home sells for when it closes or what the home down the street sold for or get them up to date with a, with a market report monthly, right? We're always looking for value to trade for what? First, their email address, right? Then their phone number. So are you out shopping for a home today or do you happen to live in the neighborhood? Uh, during our eight-week program, one of the things that we will upload and everyone will get is our, our complete script binder before the open, during the open, after the open, the campaigns we use, the eight by eight, 
right? The 33 touch. Um, but this one script, what I will say, um, changed, changed the direction of our open house. Absolutely changed the direction of our open house. Um, I got a question here. If they give you an email, are you then adding them to a marketing campaign? Or are you first asking permission? Yes, I'm adding them to a marketing campaign. And yes, I've asked permission to send them something. Now, are you going to get some opt-outs? Sure. But remember, if they give me an email address, it's purely because I'm trading them some value in my digital folder for that email. So for instance, would you like a flyer on the home? Great. There's a reason why I don't print those out because when they say yes, I say, I have a digital one. I'll send it to your phone now. What's a good email address to shoot it over to you? I'm always going to trade them value for that email address. Now, here's what happens. We do phenomenal at the open house. We connect with a few people. We get some contact information. And then if they're not an immediate buyer and they're not an immediate seller, we fall back or fall down on our post open strategy. Why? because it's not low handing, low hanging fruit. And what I will share is the majority of our open house business doesn't come from people that walked in this week, last week, this month, last month, or a couple months before. The majority of our open house closings in 2017 came from open houses that were held a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, even more, even longer ago than that. So the post open campaign is where we need to shine. Now, I get it. We're real estate agents. We're real estate agents and post open and, and process and, and, and preparation. Uh, all those other P's other than performance are drudgery or difficult. It's the one thing, right? It's the one thing that, that keeps us from executing um, consistently. So the post open plan is critical. The post open plan, uh, Gary Keller and MREA says this, the best in the industry never allow lead gen to fall prey to the ebb and flow of enthusiasm or the market. Now, here's the deal. I know that sometimes we, we show up with phenomenal energy, right? And other times we show up with less than phenomenal energy. Second sentence in MREA on that topic, they systematize, right? The best in the industry systematize such that little energy or enthusiasm is required to keep the machine running. So here's the deal. <clears throat> if I'm going out and doing two open houses, five open houses, right? Or one of the questions, seven open houses when I was starting. Remember, I started, I didn't know anybody in the town that I moved to. And so my goal was to add two people to the database at every open house. If I did five open houses, that means 10 mats, 10 mats every single week. Why? Because it reflected my goal, my gap analysis of how many people I needed to add to the database. Now, some people are thinking, well, Chris, I, I can get two people. But what about 10 or 15 or 21? I'm here to say that I just set a very, very simple goal of adding two relationships to the database for every open house. There are going to be some open houses that nobody shows up to. Not very often, but we've all had those. But if the goal is to add a, a certain number of people to your database from every open house, we'll set that as a standard and build your plan around it. But here's the deal. Unless you have systems set up, unless you have that database set up, unless you have automatic responses set up, right, for an immediate buyer, immediate seller, future buyer, future seller, then the best in the industry don't allow their lead gen to fall prey to the ebb and flow of enthusiasm. So whether I'm all about it today or not, my systems that I have in place will keep the machine running. The systems that I have in place keeps the machine running. So we need to classify the lead and add them to the database. That's why they go into the Google Doc first. I classify them at my open house. I, I have a drop down menu on that Google Doc that adds, right, they're an immediate seller, immediate buyer, future seller, future buyer, right? I have one of four campaigns that are going to get attached to them named by those same names. Um, that lead follow up, every single person gets a thank you note uh, to all the neighbors. See if they live in the neighborhood, guess what I can find? Whether they give it to me or not, I can find their address. But that's a simple question as well. Are you out shopping for a home today or do you happen to live in the neighborhood? Oh, I live in the neighborhood. Oh, awesome. What street do you live on? The minute you say that, no one's going to say, I'd rather not tell you. See, it's just a series of questions that drives you to getting their address because you know your follow-up plan includes a thank you note to that neighbor for coming to the open house. And then calls and emails to all, to all uh, visitors as well will happen that same day. 
It's a system. It's a follow-up plan. What that looks like, it's straight out of MREA, a 12 direct, an 8 by 8 a 33 touch. Interestingly enough, as you layer in your open house system and plan and model, they're going to be getting invitations by mail. They're going to be getting invitations by phone. They are going to be knocked right, get, having someone knock on their door. And if they're not home, leave something at their doorstep. They're going to see your signs. So that's why it's prospecting based, marketing enhanced. And by the time you end that year, I guarantee you, those people, that neighborhood will be on a 12 direct. Once they walk through your door, your challenge is, is, is to get them from a haven't met to a met to create an eight by eight campaign or really a relationship building campaign. And then once you've built that relationship, you know who they are, they know who you are. Now they're going to go on to that 33 touch. So it'll be thank you notes, mail campaigns, email campaigns, phone call campaigns. That's why you continue to win as you get more and more contact information. There are three types of contact, right? It's email, it's phone, and it's address. And if I get all three, I feel like, right, it's that triple crown. I won. If I get two, I'm still happy. If I get one, I'm aiming for two, right? But even if I get one, they're going to be able to get some sort of follow-up plan from me afterwards. Uh, question, will I share my Google uh, my Google sheet? Yes, um, I share all of that in the class, actually, the uh, hold it open and close the deal class. So um, obviously, follow-up is important. Gary Keller says this, the power behind having big goals is really about the power of acquiring big habits by beginning with the end in mind. Open houses historically have not begun with the end in mind, and that has been our problem. Uh, the problem is we show up on a Saturday or Sunday uh, to just execute without the big goal and, and truly without big habits as well. So our, our goal is to create some big habits. And quite honestly, the majority of these habits can be done administratively by someone else. Now, you might be thinking it's just me, and this sounds like a lot. We'll talk about what that perfect week looks like for an open house agent. If they're doing two or three open houses a week or four open houses a week, right? We'll talk about the time blocks it takes to do the preparation and follow that process. But interestingly enough, interestingly enough, this, this plan can get executed incredibly well by a single agent. It can be executed even more so by a team that, that leverages off all the administrative stuff. So whether it's you that you want to go through this course or have a lot of operations and administrative people that, that their team leader sends them through the eight-week program, hold it open and close the deal such that they can build out the systems and processes and then the agents can get trained up on the performance. A question came up. Do you ask if they have an agent? Nope, I don't bring that up. However, if they do, they typically will, right? Uh, it may come up in conversation, but I don't actively look to find out if they have an agent. Now, eight out of 10 open house visitors, guess what? Do not have an agent. Now, if you've done open houses, you know about eight out of 10 say that they do right? And we know that they don't. So the quick question that I bring up after they say they have an agent, I said, excellent. I'm so glad you're working with an agent. Um, who, what's your agent's name? And oftentimes they don't know. If they know, I let it go. If they don't know, clearly they don't have one. And it's the impulse response. Like when you go into Nordstrom and they say, do you need some help? And you say, no, I'm just fine. Um, so it may be an impulse response response to say they have an agent and I will push for contact information. Or if they don't know their agent's name, do they really have a relationship? Probably not. Probably not. Um, so the power behind having big goals is really about the power of acquiring big habits. So uh, this, this session starts next week, right? Next Tuesday, February 27th. It'll be for eight weeks at noon central time. Uh, they are one hour live calls. Um, so I do these calls myself live every single week for eight straight, straight weeks. They are recorded. Uh, Maps Fast Track uses a, a program called Basecamp where all of our scripts, our campaigns, our documents, that lead sheet gets uploaded to that uh, so you can use it. It truly is designed, right? It was designed to bring this open house lead generation lever that we have built our business around uh, to anyone uh, that is committed to go through that eight week program. Where do you sign up? You can go to Maps uh, Group Coaching, right? So Maps Coaching and, and click on the group uh, link or simply hold it open and close the deal.com. 
So hold it open and close the deal.com will bring you straight to maps as well. Um, and uh, you can sign up there again. We're beginning just a few days away. Um, and we will go for eight straight weeks to build out that system. Questions. I'm going to go through the questions real quick. For those of you who had a question, I'll try to answer them. Um, can you elaborate on how you would use that technology like Dropbox? Yes, the technology is really there just to, to host everything digital, all the value digitally that you will then have at your fingertips to be able to provide to trade for contact information. Remember, digital content allows me to trade for their email. Once I get their email very easily, I can get their phone number. So that's why uh, I use Dropbox because it was free. Now with as large of an organization, we have a paid for um, online uh, you know, service called ShareFile. Um, how do you approach the customer at the open house and ask for their phone number? We discussed that briefly, but I always trade some value first. And typically that value starts with the email. And then I let them know while I'm writing in that email, hey, oftentimes you know how it goes. These emails bounce back. In case that email bounces back, what's a good number to reach you at? I will share one more script. At the end of the open house, if you haven't captured their phone number, this script was shared uh, with me by Kasha Olick, one of the greatest open house agents we have in our company out of uh, Oklahoma, if I got that right. And one of the scripts that she uses and I have adopted and, and, and share is um, simply this. I have so enjoyed our conversation today and would love to continue it. Would that be okay? I have so enjoyed our conversation today and would love to continue it. Would that be okay? Here's what I'll tell you. It's very difficult to say no to that. No, I haven't enjoyed our conversation. No one's going to say that. So ultimately, it's a phenomenal way at the end if we've dropped the ball and we messed up our performance and we didn't get their contact information, it's our last ditch effort to get their contact information. What does that mean? Well, we, we need to have a conversation in order to say we've enjoyed our conversation. If a buyer is not interested in your value, is, another is there another close for their info? Yes. We'll go through some scripts. Understand that's why we have five or six things. If there's no value that you can provide, then we have not earned the right to ask them for their contact information. And that's my mindset. So we will talk about how to earn the right and provide other value. If it's a buyer, we'll talk about what is valuable to a buyer. Um, we use the expression, would you be offended if... I sent you this because that's also very difficult to say no to. So a lot of that is just scripting through the open house um, for sure. What tactics do we use when multiple people come into the house and you can't reach them all? Here's my mindset around that. My mindset is I only need two every open house. So there are going to be times that you advertise and you market well and right, you have five or six people going through the home at one point in time. My goal is this, not to get distracted. Develop a relationship with who you're talking to, get their contact information, and then move on, right? The, the, the purpose of that open house is to develop a relationship and add to your database. Fair? So one more time, I hope as many of you will join us. Again, go to hold it open and close the deal, spelled exactly like it sounds, .com. Hold it open and close the deal, .com. One hour a week for eight straight weeks. Um, we will download and upload and, and, and coach you through the entire system and the entire process that ultimately you know, led to a large majority of our hundred, almost 150 million in volume last year and 3.7 million in GCI. It's a system and a process that I've, that I've teached uh, at Mega Camp and Family Reunion um, and obviously uh, through this program uh, consistently over the last few years and hope uh, as many of you as possible uh, can, uh, can get there. Um, in the meantime, feel free to reach out to me. I have two more questions that I will answer right now. Um, just jump in real quickly and if anyone wants oh, to sign up yeah. for that program they can use the promotional code from family reunion which is still available to them and that promotional code upon registration for the program is fr 2018 so that's fr 2018 awesome so fr 2 zero one eight promotional code and and what um how does that work and what does that do for them ben that gets them a 20 percent uh discount on the original price for awesome. this uh upcoming launch only awesome awesome so if you missed uh if you missed signing up during family reunion and you want to use that promotional code that is still good um absolutely a couple last questions do you have time for that ben yes of course 
It says, I generally ask for people's information when they first come into the open house. Do you generally have the conversation and add value before you ask for them for their contact information? Yes, and here's why. Uh, my mindset or my psyche is this. We earn the right to ask for contact information. And when you earn the right, you've already developed a relationship. So big picture, it will be easier to stay in touch as opposed to the obligatory email or the obligatory phone number, which oftentimes is improper or incorrect, right? Um, and, that's, and that's why also I don't have them write it down. It's a lot easier for them to write a fake email address than for them to look you in your eyes and tell, tell you a fake email address. So I definitely will try to provide some value before asking for contact information. And then where do you draw the line in contacting uh, the lead if they do know their agent's name? Um, here's what I will say is I respect uh, that relationship incredibly. And if they know their agent's name, the first thing I say is you are working with a great agent as long as I can honestly say that. Most of the times I can. So I will let them know that they're working with a great agent, that I'm excited that they're working with an agent, and I'm just there to answer any questions about this specific house. I will also write their agent's name down and reach out to that agent and make sure that they knew that their buyer came through. So, all right, guys, that's about all the time we have for today. Um, please join us. Uh, looking forward to having a phenomenal community. Uh, we have an online community of open house agents as well uh, that we converse with. Actually, um, uh, hundreds of agents that have gone through the course at this point that we continue to uh, collaborate with and converse with. Again, this is great for your buyer's agents, um, your listing agents that are that are holding open houses for their listings um, in, in an attempt to uh, generate more listings and generate leads, and obviously for your operations people if those are the people that are going to be building out your program. Looking forward to seeing many of you on the call. Thanks, guys. Oh, last question. I'm sorry. How much is the course? It is uh, $99 a month for two months. So that comes to about $198 if I'm doing that math correctly. And using FR 2018 gets you 20% off of that. All right. Thanks for being on the call.